guys fixing my mic. Uh, welcome in. I am Donna um, from Dinners with Donna, and welcome to my channel. I usually cook once every other Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. It's been a little sporadic lately because I've had a lot of out of town guests coming and things I've had to do. But we're, this usually would be our off week. But we have a very special cooking stream for you today because we have a special guest. Hello. Jay from the chat. She won a Give Kids the World option for DizCon um, back, was it September? <gasps> September, yes. October? It was September. And it got canceled because of the hurricane. <laughs> And so we finally were able to um, figure out when she was going to be able to come to town and cook with me. And so uh, welcome in. Thank you. I'm great and thankful to be here. <laughs> so the funny thing is um, we, we both work in pharmacy. Well, I worked in pharmacy. She works in pharmacy. And we're both of Middle Eastern descent. Uh, Nora is Lebanese and I am Syrian. So today we decided we're going to cook stuff from our heritage for you guys. We are going to make a baked kibbeh, which I equate to a meatloaf. Would you agree? I would think so, yes. Okay. With a little twist. With a little twist, yeah. And um, a little Middle Eastern flair, I'll say. And then we're going to make a tabbouleh salad, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Um, that's like a, a base of bulgur wheat, uh, heavy on parsley, tomato. It's really yummy. And then for dessert, we're making something actually that I've never made before. Have you made this before? I haven't. No, okay. I've had it only. This is a new one for us. <laughs> it's called, I believe, and if anyone is Lebanese or Middle Eastern in the chat, let me know if I'm butchering this because I've never made it before. It's called, I believe, Shaviat. Um, and it's basically a silo square that we're going to fold into a triangle. It's filled with what's called an ashta, which is a kind of custard um with milk and cream and i'll tell you how i made that because i had to make that the day before so it could show up and set up and then you top it with a uh, sugar syrup and crushed pistachios so yeah we are i guess i preheated my oven to 350 for the kibbe and it takes an hour to bake which is that in that time that's when we're going to do the salad and prepare the cheviot to go into the oven um, we will do a chat check in a moment. We're having some technical difficulties, so Richard's working on those. When he comes back, we will do a chat check. But in the meantime, let's get this kid right, started. All right, tell me what to do. Okay, so I'm going to grab the... Now, do you call it a sunia too? Yes. Okay, so um, in Arabic, we call this a sunia. It's basically just a pan. It's 13 by 9 by 2. So this is what we're going to be baking our kid bay in. I'm going to put this up here. Is that making? I'm looking over there to see if it's. Yeah, they can't see it. Okay, great. So now we have to make what's called. Uh, it's going to be the top and bottom layer. It's a, this is a layered dish. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, come on in with me. Okay. <laughs> so the bottom and top layer are made of what's called kibbeh Now that is basically an uncooked mixture of bulgur wheat. Um, ground beef, um, onion, and spices, mm -hmm. and then the middle is uh, like a stuff. I, I call it stuffing, but it's not really. It's kind of like a hushway. Right. It's um, got beef and onion and uh, toasted pine nuts and allspice and salt and pepper. Um, and I made that ahead of time to save some time since, like I said, this has to bake for an hour, mm -hmm. um, and then it has to cool for about 15, 20 minutes before we cut it. So, what I did. I started with uh, one cup of bulgur wheat. Where am I here? Yeah. And you have to rinse it. I rinsed it five times, and then you put water to soak it because you want it to bloom and soften. So you're going to leave it for you can leave it for a long time, at least a half an hour. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so that's what we did here, and it gets all the extra starch and yucky stuff out when you rinse it too, because you never know if there's a stray, you know, like pebble or anything or bad grain in there. It'll pour off when you're rinsing it. So this is the good stuff we've got left. I'm gonna drain it and put it over a bowl, I think. There we go. And I'll get my little strainer, which is here. Okay. And this should go right over here. 
perfect. See, fits right over the top. And do you want to go Surely ahead? Surely, we'll do that. And then the blue ball can go right into the strainer because yeah. we're going to um, pat it dry with um, paper towels and squeeze all the excess out, you know? Is that, what are we doing with this? Yeah, go ahead. Where is that? It really creates volume, doesn't it? It really does. And when I do, yeah, just push it down. Yep. And then that's fine because what I'm going to do is, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab okay. a paper plate and then put some paper towels on it. Mm-hmm. The blue clothes, which took up all the weight. And this is the fine grain. We don't have a course for this. No. Uh, are we having audio issues now, too? Okay. I was like, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get some paper towels to dry it on. And then we can just put it all right there. And then we'll go like this. Okay. And see, you can see when we drain the water, it's cloudy. That's all the extra starch you don't want in there. So that's a good thing. Get rid of all of that. And we're actually going to be making more, um, we're going to be uh, rinsing and uh, blooming more um, boulder wheat for the tabbouleh. So what I'm going to do, I'll just, let's see, I think if I get a rubber spatula, I get all those. There you go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's like when you make fudge brownies. You don't want to miss that. I know. You don't want to. Unless you want to lick the bowl. No. I don't no. think we want to lick the no, bowl. No, we're not going to lick the But fudge brownies you might want to. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right. There we go. And so there. There we go. Oh, yeah. I can still see it. Perfect. And then we can just like go like this. Yeah. Spoon. Nice and clean. And then we can just press on that, like fold it over. Yep. Press in. I'll rinse this up. Okay, so we don't have music today, guys. Sorry about that. So, yeah, we'll just kind of, here, I'll show you. There we go. This. Oh, yes. And squeeze. Squeeze. Look at all that moisture. Yep. Feel that. It's yes. Like oh so goodness. much. Okay. So, we've got a lot of moisture here. Let's see. You can see it in here. But it's totally saturated the paper towels, which is a good thing. But now I'm going to get um, a big bowl so we can mix our uh, kit in there. But what I'm going to do first, I think, is get the budahal for the tabbouleh okay. um, like blooming and okay. rinse it. So if you can hand me my recipe, I can't quite rinse it. I need the tabbouleh recipe. Nope. There we there go. It is, there it is. How much does it say? Oh, only a quarter cup. So yes. that's that's not bad. Okay. Yeah. So I just need a quarter cup, and I'll do the same exact thing that I did. I'm gonna rinse it, and let it drain it out. Head, we just break the balloon. Yes. Yeah. Let me get that for you. Thank you. Got that right. Okay. Get that off. And we're gonna rinse our for the hole. Like I said, five times. So what I'm doing is I'm in the sink. And I've got it in a bowl, and I'm submerging it in water, and then pouring off the excess liquid. Careful not to spill it all into the, the sink, but just the water. That was one. 
I'm sorry for the water noise, guys. And this is two. We do it, my mom always said do it five times. Well, doing it five, five times. in Middle Eastern terms means grace. Did yes. you know that? Yes, so, I did. We are tied to blessing your food. That's right. Very important. Absolutely. And don't worry if some grains of the Buddha hall or Bogori um, come off and go into the sink. It's the main part of it will stay in the bottom. The particles that go off at the top and float at the top, you don't want. Yes. Yeah. Is that was <laughs> this is four. When Mark pants that I could sing. Yes, Glenn, I think you're right. Go ahead, sing, Richard. Someday when you have a chance, look up Donald Duck Sings. What's the song? One for My Baby. Oh, okay. I love that. Oh. Donald Duck Sings One for My Baby. And we just sit there and giggle. It is fabulous. So. so now I put enough so you can cover it. Oh, sorry. I didn't know my dress came in So, yeah, you cover it, and now we're going to let it sit till we're ready. It's mm -hmm. at least, it says 15 minutes, but 30 minutes or more. The more is always better. Okay, so now we're back to our uh, kibbe mea mixture, or our kibbe kibbe. So we're going to just put this, I believe, right, into the bowl. We asked the butcher's grind his meat to feed the dog. So, so well, quickly. we did all that. Okay. So, to combine the meat, oh, the ice water. Yeah, we're going to get a bowl of ice water, but we'll do that when we're ready to mix. We're not right. ready to mix no. just yet. Okay. So, we're basically, putting the vulgar wheat that we drain, and if some sticks to your paper towel, no worry. No. Nope, we're not going to worry. And then I already had chopped um, in my handy chopper a medium onion. So that's that. It's really strong. Mm, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, that's why my eyes are burning. Probably. Oh, that's wonderful smell. Let's see. I'm trying to find my, my spurtle. Oh, here it is. My little spurtle. That's right. <laughs> that way we get all the onion in there. If you want to work on that, I'll go sure, grab right. the meat. Okay. And I'll get rid of this. Well, actually, I'll save that because we'll put the meat right there. Okay. I've got the meat going. I'm using um, ground beef, 93% lean. It's a pound. Uh, what else have we got? And then we can just dump this in there. And as you can see, it's kind of like a meatloaf so far. Yes. Because we have, you know, the meat, the onion, the um, little hall, the bulb ruby is acting as, like, you know, your breadcrumbs or whatever you use in the meatloaf. There we go. And now we're going to add some spices. I'm going to add some salt and pepper, kosher salt and pepper, and allspice. And here we go. I'm going to go and just do that. A little bit more. And obviously, you cannot taste this. So, you guys are going to have to trust your instinct here because you're not going to eat raw meat. Although, my brother still eats kimene. And now, when I was little and my grandfather was a butcher in Central Falls, Rhode Island, he would make kibene, and we thought nothing of eating it because mm -hmm. back in those days, you know, we knew who our butcher was. We knew where our meat was sourced from. Do not do that. <laughs> Don't do that nowadays. My grandfather, my kiddo, he always said uh, that this would put hair on my chest. <laughs> and I would always look at him I'm like, but why would I want, I want that? that. <laughs> And the reason I'm holding the pepper over so long is because it's not grinding quite as fat as uh, much as it would because uh, it's a coarse ground. Okay. And now we're going to add some salt and pepper. 
we're going to use some allspice, which I think, yeah, right here. There we go. So now allspice is not all spices. It's not a bunch of spices mixed together in a, in a rub or a blend. And allspice is a berry that grows on a bush, is dried, and is specific to Middle Eastern and Af actually African uh, cuisine. Yeah. That looks good. So now is where the ice water comes in here. Okay. I'm going to get a bowl of ice water. Okay. And it's simply to give our hands and we actually may not need it because we're going to be using for Lord. our kitchen clothes. So we'll see. You never know. But I'll get us some ice water. And again, sorry for the ice noise, guys. Back side of mine. Yes. <laughs> O2H. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what do you think? We have a very slow ice maker, but that should be good enough. I'm just going to go with it. I don't know why our ice maker doesn't produce the way it should, but it's a new fridge. I mean, I got it when I moved in to the house. So. I've never been happy with this fridge. Okay. So we have our ice water. Mm -hmm. So now, what we're going to do is this one. Okay, so I've got my gloves. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you want to go in or you want me to go in? I don't mind going in. Okay, then go, on, go right. right ahead. Let me know if you need some water. Let it go in. There's still a little bit some it's good moisture. Sometimes you need the water to like get it to combine uh, to a good consistency. Other times you don't. Yep. And I think sometimes like here the humidity plays a part. We always have high humidity in Florida. So, you know, do you think we're going to need any? I don't know because that's, it feels, you want to feel it? Yeah. Let me put everything in here and just make double checking before we start we did the salt the pepper we did the salt the peppers. it's very simple yeah very simple and if you have someone that does not like allspice too bad for them no just no. kidding you can you can leave it out <laughs> you could also use uh the recipe if you notice now see i grew up in a syrian home so we always used allspice uh, the recipe which is from um a wonderful lebanese cook mm -hmm. maureen aboud um, I follow her on her um, website, has wonderful uh, Middle Eastern recipes, very authentic. Um, she cooks just like my grandma would, uh, so I trust her. But her recipe calls actually for cinnamon and cayenne mm -hmm. pepper. Now, I've never heard of cayenne pepper in any of my Syrian cooking. That was a new one for me, mm -hmm. so I didn't trust that so much. <laughs> Even though I trust Maureen Aboud, she's amazing. But with that one, I was like, no, I've always used allspice, and I'm going in with that. But whatever, you know, floats your boat. You could throw some garlic in here if you wanted to. That looks good, yeah? I, I think so, too. Yeah, I don't okay. think I'd want to put more water in. So I guess we're going to – I just usually go down the middle. Okay. And just cut yeah. in half. How does yeah. that sound? That sounds good. And then you can yeah. pat it in the pan. Yeah. And then, since you're going to be doing the padding, okay. I'm going to take my gloves off and yep. show them the filling, if that's okay. Okay, yep, that's perfect. Perfect. You're doing great. Okay, I'm going to go throw this away. I'm going to break that. Wait a minute. How'd you get the music to work? Got it on my phone. Oh, for goodness sakes. I have three trials. That's funny. Okay. So... What I did earlier to save a little time, it's like I said, this is a layered um, dish. It's kind of like, I don't want to say a meatloaf because there's no, uh, I mean, it is like a meatloaf, but it's not like a lasagna. No. Because it's layered like a lasagna, but there's no cheese in it, there's no sauce, nothing like that. It's a layered meat dish. It's interesting because you're actually using the same ingredients, but you cook it, mm -hmm. and you're going to put a cooked layer in between two raw layers. And the only difference is you put pine nuts in the mm -hmm. filling so here's the filling guys 
And all that is, is a pound of the, again, the 93% lean ground beef that I ground with an onion, medium onion, uh, salt, pepper, allspice, and toasted uh, pine nut. And um, they're yummy. <laughs> and uh, I can say, oh, Siri's talking, sorry. Um, we did taste test this and it, it delicious. Oh, so it came up really, hey. oh, that looks perfect. Okay, I'm gonna grab a spoon. Okay. Actually, I'll use my little spatula here. Okay. And then I'll let you do that. Hi, JL. Oh, I think I forgot to put my super chats back on. <laughs> I might have to have a uh, Sam or someone run and do that, or maybe I'll do that in a little while. But um, thank you, JL. I'll go see if I can fix that. So I'm just gonna, you know, spread this out evenly all over that bottom layer. No, it's delicious. Good, right? Oh, doesn't it? I'm going to try to spread the pine nuts up. They kind of ended up all on that. Now, did your family used to make the Lebanese bread or the Syrian bread? We used to call it Syrian bread, too. Like, um, like a pita? Like a pita. Um, my aunt made pita. Okay. We always grew up. Like, I didn't realize you bought loaves of bread until I was probably, I don't know, 10 oh, or see, 12. Yeah, we didn't make ours that often. We had a Syrian bakery oh, okay. that we would always go to. But yeah, my aunt, uh, Sally, well, she's passed away, unfortunately, but she used to be the one that made the pita bread, and it's so delicious. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do a quick wash of this, because I know I'm going to need it again. Oh, this smells delicious. Okay, and then I'm going to get this all popped. Yep, and Nora's going to put the top layer on. While she's doing that, I'm going to, I'm just going to run to my office really okay. fast and see All if right. I can fix that issue that failed. And right, yeah, you're doing wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to Usually at home, I'm the person who does a prep work, but my daughter, Amanda, is the one who puts together this because she had the opportunity to do a lot of cooking with my mom. When you're doing the top layer, you can't do what I did with the bottom layer. Just take the amount of meat and spread it because it won't spread because of the cooked layer. So what you do is you take portions at a time and you just almost make flat patties. And then you just kind of piece it together like this. Because if you try to just spread this entire thing over there, it's going to maneuver all of the cooked layer where you don't want it to go. You want to trap that cooked layer in between the raw layer. And I'm sure my daughter will tell me whether I'm doing this right or wrong. Because, like I said, she's the pro. One of the greatest blessings we had was um, my husband and I had an opportunity to spend some time with my mom while we both finished up college when the kids were young. And one of the things my daughter had a chance to do was cook with my mom because um, I was able to get some recipes written down, but a lot of it we would say, how much do you put in? And she would say, just enough. Or she would say, you know, until it looks right. And then you'd say, how long do you cook it? Um, well, you'll know just by looking at it. So I was fortunately able to get my daughter to write down a lot of her recipes before she passed away. So I think I fixed everything. You might need to refresh or go out and come back in, I think. I don't know. Did it work? <laughs> Really? It said it did it. That looks great. I'll go see what happened. I'll be right back. So sorry, everybody. What? Um, I'm hoping. See, normally a lot of them ghost on top of me. Like, in other words, they sign under me. So um, I'm wondering if my daughter signed up. I think... I told her to get a YouTube name that she can use. Of course, I think she 
teased about having something like crazy mother's daughter or something like that or something along those lines. So we'll see whether I know my boss asked me. Of course, they know when you have things on YouTube that you're able to look at it later. I think they're frightened. <laughs> Oh. The wrong way, Tron. There you go. Oh my God. That's going to go down in infamy. Wrong way, Tron. Oh my God. Oh, should I share that story? Sure. Okay. So, Tron is the new ride, of course, at Magic Kingdom that we waited five years for. And, of course, I'm one of these people who have to watch everybody do it and try it. And last night, we were able to get a lightning lane, my husband and I. And of course, me being me, I'm usually <laughs> the first, first person to try to do things and then tell everybody else what they have to do. And we were waiting in line, and we weren't expecting to board right away right. because there were a few people ahead of us. But one of the tracks was all lined up. All the riders are ready to go, and the cast members came around and said, we need two, we need two. So all the people in front of us had three and four and five in their party. So it got to us, so they brought us around. This was going to be for the very last seats. Everybody is waiting. And <laughs> from previously watching, everyone else do YouTube, I kept telling my husband, now you have to lift your leg over the seat. You'll have to walk around to the other side. So we approach the seats. He does everything right. I threw my <laughs> leg over, and the next thing I knew, I'm facing backwards on the motorcycle. Oh my. I'm facing backwards. Everyone else is facing forward, ready to take off, and the lovely yeah. little cash member comes over and says, ma'am, you can't sit on the motorcycle facing backwards. <laughs> that would have been quite a ride. Yes, it would have. <laughs> so now... I'll be, I'll be proper and gentle with any of this, but anybody who's in their 60s knows you don't always want to laugh, okay? And when you get into one of those hilarious gut-wrenching laughs, I can't stop. you can't move yeah. your body parts or anything because... Can't stop. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just laughing, cracking up, and this woman says, well, I'll help you. So now I turn myself around. I'm sitting the way properly. But now you have to slide your little legs down and then bend your knees yeah. and then slide back. And then you have to pull this thing. And then this thing attaches to your back. And every time, however I was seated in there, it just kept pinching me and pinching me. And I'm yelling, no, it's pinching. No, it's pinching. <laughs> so the nice little cast member came over, a little gentleman, and he says, do you want to ride in the other type of seat? It might be easier because now how long has everyone been waiting to take off on Tron? So my husband, who's been seated all this time, they ask him, do you want to go with her? And he's like, I'm like heck no, I'm going. He hands me his phone. He takes off. He says, I'll see you at the exit. So I had to wait for the next train, and I, I'm glad I did, because now I would tell anybody, you know what, if you have any thoughts or questions, go ahead and sit in the seat yeah. that just is comfortable, because you are still getting a thrill ride. Absolutely. It's wonderful. Um, it was safe, and yeah, I didn't scream. You just dump them in there, and okay. I'll dump them in the trash. So that's my story on Tron, and why now I'll be called, what is my name? <laughs> Wrong way, Tron. How not to ride Tron. Oh, that's hilarious. So now I have to suggest, like by November we come back down. I am going to get on that motorcycle correctly. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, and I've heard people say too when it's when you're nervous and stuff, you yes. can't fit as well no. because you're not moving the way you normally no. would. Yes. And it, yeah. And I do flight of passage fine. Mm -hmm. And they said if you do flight of passage, you won't have a problem. With right. But at that point, after three attempts, having sat backwards, there was no go. No. I just hopped off, and <laughs> he went on his way, and Aww. everybody was happy. Okay, so we can bring it back down here. Yeah. And now, you did a beautiful job. Okay. So what we're going to do is cut our diamond. But, um, Richard, can you grab a knife for me? And this is where the water is going to come in handy, I think. Right? Yes. Because yes. your knife won't stick if you do that. So, do you do the diamond pattern? We always do the diamond. We've got a $5 <clears throat> super chat from Mark Wendy. 
I guess I fixed it. Thanks, Mark. He said super chat is now available. You might have to refresh that. Thank you, Mark. Amanda's on. She said everything looks good. Smells good. Oh, okay, uh, good. What what name did she use? Okay. Okay. And I'm dipping into the water. Um, um each cut I each time I cut a row. And you're just going diagonals, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go the opposite way, mm -hmm. and that's how you get your diamond pattern. That's right. Now, if it doesn't come out right, you don't have to worry. It's not rocket science. It's very fun. easy to do. I used to think, I used to be, like, terrified that I'd mess it up when I first started making it. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, then it's just a different design. And, and who, who It's still edible. It? Yes. It's still the same thing. And yeah. the water thing is very important. Like, when you saw me pressing it out to yeah. piece it, a lot of times, I know, like my daughter is the one who does that. She is dipping her hands first, then doing it because yeah. you have to. Oh, wrong way, John. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'll start the, you this, is, do this is the word part that gets you meant to it. Yeah. So if you just start this way. Yeah. And then just. And you can see with the cuts, it's, a it's diamond. now forming. Like the bite diamond. sizes too. Yeah, it's portion sizing yeah. as well as making pretty diamond. Yeah. And then, do you put a, a gap? We, in each we, one? we used to take. I used to take a either a wooden spoon or something round on the end, like mm -hmm. a wooden spoon, and we would poke holes. Okay. Like we'd put holes, and then we would pour. We would pour the um, oil on top. Oh. Did you okay. ever do that? So we're gonna no. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna do a different way. If you can okay. just um I would just like dip dip One and time. dip and poke. So make like okay. Like um just like that. Okay. Just like a little right. slip in each one. Okay. And then I'll get the butter. Okay. Now I cubed a whole bunch of butter. I think it's like a quarter cup for the whole okay. thing. Because we're gonna put it all over the top. It makes it nice and brown and it makes it taste good. Very good. I never said Everything this was low calorie, just saying everybody. Why well, Donna doesn't make it very often. Your body knows what to do with butter. Okay. Yeah. I had an organic chemistry teacher who told us he brought out what margarine looks like before they dye it yellow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's white. It's disgusting. <laughs> and your body, your liver, everything, it doesn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying to anybody they can't use it. I'm just saying butter is natural. It, the body learns what to do. Yeah. Is that okay? That's very true. I think you got them all right. I think so. Yeah. It'll so now spread. we're just gonna put all the butter all like one per square. I try to do, and and that's what the hole does too. It gets okay. the butter all over. Now, see, my mom pours uh, mazola. Oh, she really? would she would pour the yeah, she would put mazola not over the entire thing. But she, she, these little holes, like she would make a little bit bigger hole, mm. and then just I've so never that, heard of that. Yeah, and it and it. That's um, so interesting. It's almost like it fries the meat. Yeah. On top. And only once did I have a bad experience in the oven where. Oh really? Yeah, that stuff that we call firemen for. Oh. But it was okay. We know to close it, cut off the oxygen. This I'm going to try next time. Yeah, this is how my grandma did it. And it makes sense because... And it always tastes so good. Yes. Oh, I'm excited to I'm try this. I'm just going to put the extra... Amanda, do you see this? Yes, because we we always used to poke holes and just pour mazola. And that's butter. Yes, and that's butter. So this is going to be my new... That's why it's important to do this, to get together and... Yeah, and, and see how... And see how you know, different recipes... And the thing, when you do that, too, is you merge the good ideas... Absolutely. ...and then the good recipe you had even better. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so guys, now do we need to cover this? I, I never covered mine. I never covered no, mine either. No, okay, I just no, want to, to... You know when you forget? Yep. It's been so long since I made this, you okay. guys. We'll get the uh, oven? The last time I made this was when I lived in Oklahoma. And I think it was like 20... 15 when my brother came to visit from upstate new york and i wanted to make him a syrian meal so i made him this and i made him a gravy i have do you know gravy they're like the butter cookie with the almond in it oh yes yes and they're yes. like yeah. made in a circular yeah. shape yeah so here's what we're looking at and now it's going into the oven for an hour and that's pretty much it 
And that's probably why on my mom's recipe, they do two different temperatures because of that oil, I'll bet you. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what, see, I mean, yes, you know what, she probably had, had smoke to, point. absolutely, yep. she probably had to adjust. So I'm going to do just a touch of cleanup. Okay. We throw stuff in the dishwasher. And then we will start on our tabbouleh. tabbouleh. Now I will say, the tabbouleh, I did make one batch ahead of time. Um, Sam loves tabbouleh, mm -hmm. but I, again, I haven't made it in forever. Just because um, chopping parsley is not my chance. It makes such a mess. <laughs> Tasha Ross said, I feel like I'm watching Ron Ross cousin cooking thunder. Oh, oh, and look, guys, we match, and it's because Honora got us matching aprons, and she was so sweet. She brought me a headband. Oh. She brought me matching Mickey, our mini ears, too, and a tote bag. All matching. And we have pot holders and a, a dish, dish towel. So. so every time you use them, you can think of me. That was all I always think of you. I do want to. I wanted a Remy for my shoulder. I have one at home. Oh. We have um, like the pots hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. So my Remy sits oh. there. Oh, that's he's adorable. Like the, class the other night, I'm like, where's the Remy? So he's sitting. Oh, yeah. oh that was sold out a long time ago. Oh. So we need to bring those back. That's a shame. Okay. Tabule. I need a bowl. We're going to need a lemon. We're going to need about two to three bunches of... Flat leaf, not the curly. Flat leaf, Italian parsley, chopped finely. Um, I'm using Maureen Abood's recipe this time. Like I said, she's my go-to. And I think, is my mom in the chat? Okay, mom, if you're in the chat or watching, tell me if I'm wrong. So I thought we used regular onion in ours, but Maureen Abood uses chopped uh, green onions along with the white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the Lebanese Yes, right? yes. Green onions. That smells good. That smells fabulous. And so I put some a little bit of lemon juice on there just so it wouldn't, you know, turn. Oh my goodness, that smells wonderful. And then a tomatoes right here. Okay. So this is such a simple salad. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got my tomato that I, I chopped already. And that's gonna go in the bowl. We have our chopped um, parsley and green onion along with the white. Don't forget to trim the ends off, though, um, that I have in here. And we'll that's what it looks like. And you, you don't want the stems of the parsley. you got to de-stem. And it takes time. That's why I did it ahead of time, because that's my least favorite chore. And it's messy. Messy? It's messy. It is messy. I had, yeah, it looked like Corey was in my kitchen again. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll get all that out. This is great. See, these rubber spatulas yes. get every little last bit so you don't waste anything. Carol said, Donna, I use green onions and a lot of green in my Okay. So I don't know what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Fatouche. Fatouche has onions, doesn't it, Mom? I don't know. All right. So we're going to drain, again, our um, Buddha hole that we've had soaking. Okay. I'll use that again. Thank you. There we go. And that's just touching what's going to go in there anyway. Yep. So I'm just going to, you know, paper towel it again, like I did with the others, and get all the extra liquid out. Because look at all that liquid, guys. Oops. There's a lot. So you don't want that in your salad. It'll make it runny, and you don't want a runny salad. So I'm going to just, and now what we're going to do also is throw in some, um, we're going to chop some mint uh, fresh. We're going to put, we're going to make a salad dressing for it in a separate bowl with dried mint. because It's mint heavy and parsley heavy. So you don't like that. Uh, that might be a problem. <laughs> You might like, this not, might not be the salad for you if you don't like parsley and you don't like mint. So, and it's not minty like peppermint bark minty. Okay. 
the flavors can like just mix perfect, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna have you stir that and then I'm gonna grab the uh, dressing ingredients, which is just olive oil, dry mint, lemon, and I think salt and pepper, and I think that's mm -hmm. it. Oh, this looks fabulous. Let's see what we got here. Oh, here's our cup of tea. We're gonna choose our lemon. Yep, yep. Four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, and crushed dried mint. So there we go. And I'm gonna use, I need a bowl. I need a little bowl. I'll wash this out. Oh, <laughs> nope, that's a Nora's husband. <laughs> He's standing in for Steve. <laughs> okay, so we've got four tablespoons we're gonna put in here of our olive oil. I'll grab the salt. We have the pepper over there. And our dried mm -hmm. mint, which I have right here. Mm -hmm. I had to buy it because see now I use mint constantly. Yeah, I use it in that we were talking about that. Mint does not <clears throat> grow well here in Florida. Right. Um, we used to grow it and just pick it from yes. our yard <laughs> when I grew up in New England. Yeah. I'm not used to not having access to my spices. Like I had to buy fresh mint and it was $2.29 for each little packet. Oh. I mean, you need three of them. <laughs> oh. I knew I was like, really? So, okay, so four tablespoons. <laughs> they did. I'm going to try to grow it, but I don't think it's going to work. I, I had one windowsill that I put a lot of herbs in just. Oh, nice. Because you know what I do then? When they when you forget to water them and they dry out, you just and I have to vacuum, I grab it and I go like this all over my house. Right. And then I vacuum up. It makes like a sachet. It, it does, and it smells great in the house. That's awesome. Okay, so we got our pepper. And really, this kind of this, but uh, the spice part is kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my pepper grinder is not like, you know, having black pepper in a shaker. It takes a little while to, to grind it. I'm going to put some salt. Jen and Martina want to know if he eats your cooking because she knows he's a picky eater. Yes, um, he eats some of my cooking. This he probably would not. Touch. I think he would do okay with kibbe. I really well. Not with the, the pine nuts, spice and the pine, pine nuts, nuts pine and nuts the and hall. I think we could get away with both the weights with that. Teaspoon of mint. Yep, and then our lemon juice, and that's all we have for our dress. That's our dressing Very for the simple. salad. So simple, so delicious. It's gonna be great. Okay, so I had my juicer. Where did I put it? It was right there. This? Oh my gosh. It's right in front of I me. I thought you were teasing me. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Well, I had done it this way. Let's see how we do. So it's the juice of two lemons. I'm gonna get your elbow grease in here. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do one because this looks really one juicy, doesn't cup? it? So you just like, want one of that? You just yeah, I think that looks. You like know what? A, you can always add more. That looks like a lot. Now I had a little my little a strainer. strainer. There we go. Because I don't want to get any seeds or no. pulp in there. And then I'm just gonna whisk it. Yep. Perfect. Yep. I really need to get, I got this juicer for like $3. I need to get one that has like a strainer built yeah, in. Yeah, that's, I have something that does that. Like as you do this, it takes yeah. the thing out. Okay, so let me use the back of the spoon. Mm -hmm. Just to get all the. Emily says, I love watching other people cook. It's so relaxing and I don't have to do the dishes. I love that. <laughs> Emily, you're awesome. I know we haven't done a chat track yet, but hang in there, guys, because we will have some downtime and I'll have Richard. Uh, tell me who's here. Um, but hello, so one and all, and welcome in. Thank you for joining us on this special Sunday, because normally you know this wouldn't be the uh, Sunday to Tuesday. I never cook on Tuesday um, on stream. But 
<laughs> but on a Sunday, this usually is my Sunday off, but we decided because this is when Honora could get here, and she she placed the winning bid on this con. Give Kids the World. I was so excited for Give Kids the World, and um, yeah, so we, we made it happen. And so we're just going to whisk this dressing. And it's my way also, I just No. Sorry, Richard. Okay, I'm going to whisk that, and we're going to taste it. And we're going to see if we think it needs the other lemon okay. or not. Make it blue at Disney Adventure says, hello from Wilderness Lodge. Oh, hi, Caitlin. I didn't know you were in town. Welcome in. I don't know you're going to have to test. I like it. Okay. I don't know if you put more lemon in, if it'll be more tart. Yeah. How's the salt? Salt, I think, is perfect. Okay. I think everything's perfect about it because I think the onion, I don't you think perfect? Yeah. Yep. If we did the other lemon, yeah. it would be too tart. It would do too tart. I kind of thought so. Okay. So now we just dump this into the salad. Mm -hmm. Hey, Garrett, Michelle, Gabe, and Hannah. And Kayla and Snoopy. Scooby. Is it Scooby, right? Not Snoopy. It's Scooby. Like Scooby Doo. They just got a new dog. Oh, that's Front wonderful, deck. Caitlin. Oh. Congratulations. Oh. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us on your break. I hope everything's going well over there. I know it's been quite busy. Oh, did you smell that? Oh, I wish it was smell a vision. That's what I say every time I watch your shows. So now, I think we should put, oh, we, we forgot one ingredient. The mint. The mint. Okay. And I think we need mint for the other thing. So I'm just going to use two of our three packages. I'm just going to read the Shaviat recipe now. Nico the Greco says, Hey, Nico! I had the best smell in another Middle Eastern food 20 years ago on a rooftop in the Middle East. Oh, that mm. sounds amazing, Nico. Yum. Nope, we don't, we, we can put all the mint in here. Okay, so we're just going to chop our mint. So, actually, there's a lot of mint in here. There is a lot More of mint. More than I thought. Okay. Because we need a good, it says quarter cup, does it say? Quarter cup, finely chopped. And you being said, have you ever made non bread before? I heard it's not difficult, but I'm sure. You know, I have a show that I want to do all about making pita bread and non and flat breads and things like that. Um, so hopefully in the future we will be doing that. And that's going to be about enough. I think that's. Sure. No, I'll just do this one. JL for $5. Oh, JL. Thank you. You don't have okay, to do that. No, I haven't. I don't think we have Netflix. No. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, maybe I'll be able to see it on another platform sometime. I'm coming right behind you with some. Okay. Oops. Oh, did you get disconnected? <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to finally chop the mint. It smells really good. There she goes. Mm -hmm. oh. And don't be afraid to take your time and make sure it's finely chopped. Because there's nothing like getting a whole mint leaf in your mouth and you feel like you're eating toothpaste. Don't want to do that. And Garrett, show Michelle. This is how she's supposed to hold the knife. Not like that or that, but down here. <laughs> she makes me so nervous. <laughs> but I love Michelle. 
she's getting so good in the kitchen too, guys. You gotta check out Monarch Moments on Friday evening. They're late at 9.30 because they're on the West Coast, but uh, Fun Food Fridays, good times. Michelle makes some really interesting concoctions, but she's been getting really good with her cooking. Looks good, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're just going to scoop and put it in the bowl. And always use your flat end, not the sharp end when you're doing that, so you don't go through your hand. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mix that up. I am going to wash that board off, I think. Mark, you cable on there. Says, Hi there, everyone. Well, hello. I'd like to catch Donna Glass and see what my very first is. Oh, um, that's so kind. Thank you so much, and welcome in. Always glad to have you here. That smells and looks delicious. There you go. It's beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate up uh and we'll put it in this pretty dish and i'll plate up the one i made yesterday i'll let richard take photos and then we can sample it and i'll put this in a um oh you can put that just on that side it'll be fine i'll wash it because we're going to need it again and i'll put this in a lock and lock i thought i had one down for this salad um let's see <laughs> you're welcome michelle i hope i get to cook with you in person one day that would be like so much fun okay i'm gonna put all the tabula in one bowl looks amazing now you can eat it straight away my mom said so and what my mom said, I hold as true. Um, I personally like to chill it because that way the flavors have a little bit of time to marry and come together. So what I did last night was I made a tabula salad myself and let it sit overnight before I tried it. There you go. And I'm going to put it in this bowl. We're going to make it look pretty with some mint. I'll we'll put some fresh mint on the top and make it look really pretty. Thank you. Oh, hi, Shereen. Welcome in. Thanks for being here. Okay. Now, with the top of the, like, for garnish, I'm just going to put some, like, fresh little mint leaves just, like, on the top. Rob, welcome in. I hope you guys are all doing well. We miss you and Kaylee, Larry. Colin, Kathy. Someone said, hi, Mrs. J. That must be Rye Guy. Hi, Rye Guy and Lala. Welcome in. And happy belated anniversary to you both. Okay, guys, so here's our completed dish. I'm going to have Richard take a photo. Make it look good. And then anyone who wants to taste, I've got tasting spoons. And why are you doing dishes? You're the guest. You're not doing the dishes. That's his job. Usually, usually that's what we're doing. Because <laughs> I tend to use every dish in the kitchen. I, I tend I, to do I, so, I use, too. Because like, you know how you plated that? Yeah. I would change my mind in five minutes and go get another one. 
what did you do that for? <laughs> so everyone who wants to try, come on in. Come on in. Because oh, look at how yeah, pretty she is. This yeah. is Anoya's husband. Fran. 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 Where, which way am I looking? Right here. Right there. Oh. Oh, oh that's I have to make more of this one. <laughs> we could have this for lunch at work. Sam loves this. You know what? We need to do this. We all mm. need this. Isn't that perfect? That's so good. I just gotta say, mom, if you're still watching, mm -hmm. you'd be proud of me. Mm -hmm. I did good this time. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Except on a picture too. One of the things I thought was very nice if you were having guests over, mm -hmm. is they took the romaine lettuce, like take yes, off the like long a lettuce peel, cup, yeah, and filled it individually for people. Yeah, and presented that at their table setting for their very salad. lovely. And then, I love it because you could really just pick that up and absolutely that's perfect. Yum. I'm very proud of you. Oh, thanks, Mom. Okay, I'm going to put this in the big bowl, and then we're going to do just a touch of cleanup. So um, uh, chat amongst yourselves just I'll, briefly. I'll clean up. You no, 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 no. No, you're the guest. We're going to make our shabby up. Okay. There we go. Let's see if I can find a place for this in the fridge. Oh, that's wonderful. Yay, Rainwater's family. Okay. Here we go. You think you don't have to do that. Oh, I <laughs> She's so sweet, you guys. Okay. I'm just going to rinse. And then we'll just throw everything in the dishwasher. At the okay, end. that's what I was I wanted yeah. to know. What to yep. Yep. <laughs> Who put these things in this contrived? I think about them, how it's going to shoot the water. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other side of our board for this. Okay. And here, if you want to just hand me, yeah. and then I'll just uh, put them where I can fit them. It's like Tetris. Yes. Oh, hi, Ray. Welcome in. Hi, Jeff. Hope you're doing well. I don't know if that's enough. No, that's not going to do that. Okay. I might have to put that this up one there. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Oh, man. You do one in each one. Yeah. I've never seen that. This is the first dishwasher I've had that does that. It has a hole for each single utensil, so they're all separate. Okay. And I think I think we're almost full. Hey, Tommy and Claudia, welcome in. I hope you guys are doing well. We miss you guys too. Yeah, I think those are that's it. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Tom said you should open the I should. It'd be really good. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're good for now. Because me, everything else for the shabiyat is already made in their own little containers. So shabiyat, like I said, is a it's layered layers of filo dough brushed with clarified butter. Uh, we are using ghee today, which is clarified butter that you can get in the grocery store. Uh, here's what it looks like. I'll nuke it in the microwave to uh, melt it, but it comes in a jar like this. Or you can make clarified butter yourself. You're just going to take the milk solids. It's basically just skimming the milk solids off of the butter. So if you heat the butter up, run it through a strainer, should be good. And I made the... 
Oshkosh. Oh, come on over. <laughs> Mr. Fulton Morales is here. Well, hello, Mr. Fulton. Here's a new radio show. Oh, well, congratulations. That's amazing. Okay. Let's get our shabby up because I have not made this before. So we're going to go through this together. Now, so the components I got. So we've got the, the ghee to brush. We're going to brush the uh, layers of phyllo with that. And we'll use probably the pastry mat. Okay. Yeah. And then I made, uh, well, the unsalted butter, which is the ghee, um, heavy cream, whole milk, granulated sugar, cornstarch. You'll be happy to know I did not use rose water. I'm not a rose water fan either. But I did put a little bit of the orange blossom water okay. and vanilla. Okay. I, substitu vanilla is my I substituted the rose water. Now, if you like the rose water, go oh. for it. But I just substituted the same amount of vanilla extract pure vanilla extract uh and then we've got a tar and that's our simple syrup mm -hmm. um i'm sure if you've ever used it uh you know they use this in like cocktails and lemonade and baklava, baklava all kinds of stuff but you brush it on we're going to brush it on at the end uh it adds an extra sweetness and a sheen to our uh, pastry but it's just a sugar syrup made of sugar water and a little bit more of the orange blossom water and that's all that is and then we have our doo -doo 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 -doo, our ashta yes our ashta is where the cream is a big cut it's a thick custard so i'm put a spoonful of this in each uh phyllo pastry now um what went into there was one and a half cups of whole milk a half a cup of heavy cream the granulated sugar, the cornstarch, and it's, like I said, instead of the rose water, vanilla, and orange blossom water. So that's what's in the custard. So that was all done ahead of time because this needed to, you know, be made and cool down. This needed to be made and cool down. So, you know, we, we kind of cut a few corners there. All right. Hey, Rob, welcome in. Good to see you. Yeah, we made our own syrup. You mean your own like rose water or like the attar? Because yeah, I, I made, yeah. we made our own attar too. I made it yesterday. I just made it ahead of time is what mm -hmm. I meant. I didn't like buy it or anything. Except when I make baklava, I make my own Yeah, me no, too. No honey. Yeah, oh, no honey. Oh, I, I love honey. <gasps> okay, so I'm going to show you too. Um, when they come out of the oven, we're going to brush them with the syrup. And then I have a ground pistachio nut. So I ground those ahead of time, too, because I didn't want you guys hearing the whack, whack, whack when I was crushing them. And then here's my vanilla that I put in the uh, ashta. And the uh, this is orange blossom water. You can get it at any Middle Eastern market or on Amazon. That's where I got mine. So just wanted to show you. Smell this. It smells so good. Don't drop it. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with, I had an open pack of um, phyllo dough from before. Um, we're going to see how it's looking. Oh. Well, Mark, thank you for being here, and I know it's late there, so I totally understand. You have a wonderful evening, and thank you for joining us. Okay, so I'll just open this pack, because okay. this pack looks kind of yeah, like it's it had it. Goes away very quickly. Okay, now does it say how many layers? That's the thing. I think it said 12. We'll see. It says prepare the ashtra. We did that. We're going to melt our ghee. Yep, we're going to roll our, okay. Uh, yeah, about 12 sheets, it says. So 12 sheets of the um, phyllo, but we're going to brush each one liberally with our um, melted ghee, which I will go melt now. Because I don't think, well, I mean, some of it's melted. Do you think it's melted enough? It does look melted. Yeah, we can just dip the brush in there. Because we're just brushing it on phyllo. It's not. Oh, hello, Diane. Welcome in. Okay. So 
Yeah, we'll just, we can just do it from the jar. Yes. So I'll have you do that over here. And I have a brush, so I'll go grab that. Well, hello, Amy. Okay. Now I had it over here somewhere. Here it is. I'm going to wash my hands again because now I have butter on them. Okay. There we go. Perfect. This phyllo. Hold over this box so the phyllo can go away. And I have a baking uh, sheet that I've already layered with. Um, I've lined it, actually, not layered it. Lined it with um, parchment paper. Okay. So. <laughs> that was funny, Mark. But up bump. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm sure most of you know that we've worked with Phyllo dough before. It's very delicate. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to do, maybe, maybe put it there. And then we'll do layer by layer. And I'm going to put. I'm gonna get a clean. I'm gonna put a clean uh, dish yep. towel. Okay. No, she and used to soak her dish towel. The what? Soak it, wring it out, and then oh, put that we'll see what I. I just usually just uh, spray it. Well, there you go. <laughs> that saves a lot of time. Yep. Okay. So you spray it. So you, no, I just put oh, it right okay. on top. Okay. And then we just damp, damp, that damp. Saves you having to squeeze it out. Yep. <laughs> Makes sense. And this is so it doesn't dry out because when you try to pick up every piece, yeah, it's very fragile. And it'll just rip apart. Is that enough, do you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. And, we make and I will say, I find having a bottle of spray water, a yeah. uh, spray bottle of water in the kitchen very helpful. Okay, so we're going to do pick up 12. Well, I do one at a time. Well, yes, yeah. We'll but we need 12, yeah. And we don't have to, I, I was just going to like do it once and then put them on the tray and see how many we get. And if we have to repeat, we can, okay. but is that, that's Vans blowing our stuff, isn't it? Can, can you turn it down? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. I forgot to mention, I pinned it to the top of the chat and I, I forgot to say that um, Sam is running a uh, marathon for Give Kids the World, and she has to raise um, $850 to get her link so she can run, um, and she's at $485. So thank you to everyone who contributed to Sam's fundraiser. Thank you. You guys rock. I'm going to be over here out of the picture, and then I'll hand you the philo. Okay, you ready for the next one? Okay. Well, I'm trying to figure out that way. There we go. That's two. Amanda said, I love learning new cooking tricks and tips from Tom. Oh, well, thank you so much. I like teaching you guys things. It's fun for me. Hello, Matthew. Welcome in. Now we got to get that in. There we go. Perfect. Mark my Let the glue dry. Oops, wrong channel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Now I'll go this way. I try to let it go where it takes me. The dough kind of guides you. Yes. Knows what it wants to match up. Yeah. Is that four or three? This was three. Okay. Guys, you keep track of the layers for us. Because you know I, I lose track. I get distracted. Because we got so much going on. Okay. It should work out perfectly. Mm -hmm. We've got 25 minutes to cut it. Oh, this one broke. But I think we can make it work. And that's the thing. If it does tear not terribly, like if it tears evenly, you can 
kind of repair, which is what we'll do here. Oh, that sounds amazing. I think I'm going to spray a little bit of water on the actual phyllo. Just to keep it. No, that doesn't work. I'll go right here. Four. Four. Okay. Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Thank you so much. Okay, that one, I probably shouldn't have put the water on it. I'll just toss it in the sink. And if anything tears on you, do not fret because you can always double your sheets up. It's sticking a little bit. Right in there. I have a whole nother package if they need it. You can double the layers up if you have to. It's right at that bed. Yep. Okay. Go over. There we go. There we go. Feel of it tore. And like I said, this dough is really finicky, so don't fret if it if it crumbles or cracks, just stretch it out, back out, and fill in the cracks with the butter. And remember you're that's another reason you layer it. Yes. Don't be intimidated by it. Uh-uh. New rules. Yep. Mary Carol says hello. Hi, Mary. Hope your cats are doing well. Okay, let's just leave them two together. Oh, wait, there's three, though. Let's see. There we go. Oh, got it. What a team we are. So, yeah, I actually was very fortunate last Sunday to um, meet Shannon Thingamabose and her husband, her wonderful husband, Garrett, and we went out to dinner at uh, Sebastian's Bistro. Was we had a lovely evening. She's so sweet. And um, if my mom can grab the link, she has amazing things in her Etsy shop that she made. Mm. Yeah. Um, she makes lots of my um, knotted, head, uh, knotted bow headbands. Um, she makes bags, hats, all kinds of things. Hi, Paul. Welcome in. Work. It's being very finicky. And again, I think some of this has to do with the humidity here. And Shannon, you were here just last week. You can attest. It's very humid here, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you guys are amazing. Thank you on behalf of Sam. She's going to be pleased as punch. Thank you so much. She's so excited and she loves running those races. She's dedicated too. She has to get up and get there by three in the morning. Oh my gosh, yeah. Sweet. And she's she's dedicated. I don't think I could do that. I used to do that. When life happens. <laughs> How many do we got, you think? That is at least eight. Eight? eight. Because we had to double. Okay. Oh, how wonderful. That's awesome, Debbie. <laughs> That's why we have aprons. <laughs> so now, I know on that one recipe where they said go get cream, where would you find cream? Because they cut them in half and just... Put the fine the wait puffs, like the puffs. oh yeah sometimes my grocer will carry them in the freezer oh, okay. they're phyllo cups oh, okay but mine didn't have them yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to find things nowadays it's not like it was no before the pandemic you could find something for three months straight and mm -hmm. then it goes away you have a workshop there. oh you're so kind down with oh, the glass Shannon. and i want more of that Oh my God, that salad with the best salad. 
I've ever had. It was even better than that tabbouleh. I'm going to tell you, it was the best salad ever. Richard loved it. Shannon loved it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. It had watermelon radishes in it. It was so beautiful, too. It was aesthetically pleasing as well as delicious. Um, it had uh, toasted uh, papitas for crunch. Uh, it had every every flavor. It had every note, every flavor, every texture. It was really good. Did I see Steve and Corey have that? Yes. Yes, they had it the Thursday before. Oh, with, uh, Dale. Mm-hmm. Did Steve eat it? Steve thought it was too citrusy. Okay. And I don't think he ate most of the vegetables. Did he Did he eat the salad? Without the dressing. Oh, Without the dressing, he doesn't yes. like dressing. And the dressing was like the best part. Hi. Hello. Hi, Sparks. Welcome in. Was that 10? Mm -hmm. More? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Hey, Jen. Welcome in. Oh, awesome. You and Tony look great at the uh, pink tie ball. Those photos were awesome. Oh, right. Look at that. Okay. Two more. Two more. Two more. Oops. So this was, this is solid usually? Yeah. Hmm. It looks delicious. I love butter. <laughs> Well, and see, it's just it's just temperamental yes. dough, but you just you make it work. Yes. You know, we only need one more, and uh, we'll make it work. Oh, awesome. oh, wonderful! I think I knocked my mic off. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. It was a great event. Oh, wonderful. I'm going to fix my neck and do like this. Okay. Oh, it's just hanging now. <laughs> Perfect. These are so nice now. Yeah. I still have some of the worst, is it worst? Um, pastry pressure? Pastry oh, they're so plain. <laughs> I love the silicone ones because they're yes. they're so easy. They, they bend, they don't ruin it. Wonderful. Good. Good. Okay, so now we're gonna cut these into little squares, but I gotta figure out how big. I know the phyllo. 12 sheets, cut the sheet into even squares. Depending on the size of your phyllo, the size of the squares may vary. Uh, okay, her squares were four inches. Oh, stop it, Siri. <laughs> so we're going to get a knife and we're just going to cut them into squares. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is. Farm pharmaceutical elegance is everything. That's right. Dr. Sagri will be fun. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Like that. Like that. And that's the importance of making sure that all the layers, because otherwise that will yeah. all. And then we're going to go this Let's way. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at that. Again, pharmacy. Yes. This is how we're taught. We measure, exactly. we can tell, we can guess to me. Through those capsules. Yep. On the grid, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nadine said, I just got a silicone mask because of Donna. Oh, hey, Nadine. That's awesome. I'm getting professional. I love it. Okay. So now we're ready for our Ashta cream. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Richard, if you can grab the baking sheet and we can fold up the phyllo we didn't use. But I think I'm just going to throw that away because unless we're going to make more, we'll decide. But I think this is enough. We have a lot of ashes. Thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah. I might pop it back in the fridge, maybe. Me too. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a spoonful of the Astra cream. And I said this is, uh, they equate this to like um, a Lebanese version of clotted cream. So I'm going to put them in all the squares. And then if you want to, while I'm doing this, what we do is um, fold them over and just make a triangle. I'll show you. I'll show you the first one. Almost like making a pierogi? Yeah, kind of. And you just push. We don't want the filling to get. There we go. Jen Piccolo said, I'm not a huge fan of mint and savory foods. Do you have, any, have a suggestion for a couple of seasons to go with that? Parsley. I'd use parsley. Just like that. Kind of okay. like a Spanish copita. Okay. So we'll do that. And then um, I'll fill the rest of them. I think maybe I should put a little less filling because it seemed like that was a little bit much. Gabriel says, Donna's cooking it. Aw, thank you, Gabriel. Okay. Yeah, I might need the knife. Yeah. And just let me know if I need to go over any of the cuts. I don't want to push too hard because I want to cut the mat. Yes. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of Ashta cream. I don't know why it said to make so many. How many do they want you to make with this? Probably for the yeah, really good. She reset her like paper football. She used to make when she was little. Yeah. I think I'm going to move a little bit of that. Got a high from Paul DeWolf. Yeah. Hmm? Got a high from Paul DeWolf. Oh, hi, Paul DeWolf. Welcome in. Now, I've tried this. Uh, and to me... It was reminiscent of um, like a clotted cream, kind of, and almost gave me the flavor of rice pudding. Oh, yeah. Michelle said it's an empanada. Yeah. Oh, here. Well, you know, Michelle and I are famous for our empanadas because I cooked with her and um, coast, to coast. coast to Coast Stream. And we made Thanksgiving empanadas with a pumpkin filling, mm. and it was pretty epic. But before that, she had a, uh, well, I, I don't want to call anything a failure, but she had an attempt at a tuna empanada, which was quite interesting. Um, but apparently the dog wouldn't even eat it. <laughs> Is that true, Michelle? I, I had missed that one, so. There we go. They had me make way too much ostrich cream. Well, yeah. I mean, do they think I'm making a hundred of these? <laughs> so, Richard. Well, if I like them, can I make them? Well, yeah. Yes. And then maybe, yeah, maybe the cream cups. Taste that and tell them what you think. Because I held back on the orange blossom water. I just got vanilla. Mm -hmm. I like it. But you got to remember, a lot of the flavor it's gonna be is going to come from the syrup and the pistachios. Yes. And the butter from the phyllo. There's a lot going on. Is 
Then I saw one by Sheree said, Donna, can you save me some for the next time I see you? <laughs> sure, Sheree. And when you get to the end, you can taste. Mm -hmm. Do we need to? I wasn't sure if it would be like cream cheese, but it's really yeah, no. not. It's like a custard, but thicker. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what else can you do? It's got to be something. Can you freeze it? Is my question. I bet you could. Just as long as you label it so you know what it yeah. is. Yeah. We're coming back in October. Got to put my new AP to use. Wonderful. Right. Tomorrow we have ours, our older AP expired today, expires today. Oh. But because we decided to come on Thanksgiving Day, we had to up to the credit pass. Oh. Because we looked at what it would cost mm -hmm. just to get three days. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. So it was better to get the credit pass, but we got discounted. So it was pretty good. Right. The chicken Farm Champ says, hello, all. <laughs> Donna Jaworski, how is my favorite song? Oh, look at how Hi, Tony. Chicken Farm Champ. <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to have to, like, just kind of seal. Yeah. Push down as much yeah. as you can. So it says fold. just to fold it over, but yeah. it's not working like a puff pastry right. would. But I think once I'm doing, but I'm it's doing it once I do that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Michelle said, "This is great." Gabriel practicing his reading, looking at the chat on. TV. Yay, Gabriel! Way to go! I think Gabriel rocks. Yeah. It's good. Vanilla is good. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like a vanilla custard. Mm -hmm. Want to try some, Fran? Sure. I it. You're welcome. It's it's hard. <laughs> it's yeah, not it's creamy. Like yeah, it's not like creamy like a custard, but it's going to be cooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. When you do this. It leaves out. room for other forms yes. to marry. Mm -hmm. It has a good it like aftertaste, like mm -hmm. orange. It's the orange blossom oh, water and the vanilla. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm thinking like pie crust on the bottom, a layer mm -hmm. of that, chocolate pudding on top Ooh. of that, caramel. Yum. Okay, I'm just trying to. It says, does it not say on there to just fold it over? It so does. maybe you're not supposed to seal it. Maybe it's thick enough. Maybe that's why it's so thick. So it won't run. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary Ellen. Welcome in. So to recap, we have our baked kibbe in the oven. We made a tabbouleh salad, which was excellent. And we have just completed our... Uh, Shabbat, and they're going to be going in the oven in roughly six minutes. Yep. So I'm going to move this, move the board. Actually, I'll leave the board. But yeah, we can put stuff on it. I'll rinse this off, do a little cleanup. Oh, no, because the skin, yeah, the skin would have formed already. But thank you. I'm going to wash this pan real fast. Oh, that gets hot. hot. Um, it's, I think it says don't refrigerate. At least the other bottle I had. Yeah. That's there. Okay, that yeah. is very good. That's okay, good. so while we're waiting for the, um, now I, I will say, guys, I would like quarter the recipe for yes. the Ashta, mm -hmm. and it was, I clicked on the link for Ashta, and it didn't say make a half a recipe or anything like that, so makes a lot, <laughs> but we can definitely make more of these. 
Um, we just don't want to, you know, you saw how it's kind of labor intensive and time consuming to do layer, 12 layers and we'd be here all afternoon. So, <laughs> but while we're waiting, I want to show you uh, the awesome stuff that Nora brought. Um, obviously the apron and my beautiful headband. Yes, yes, they're Vera Bradley. So I got the pot holders and you can see all the different characters are subtly scattered throughout. We've got Snow White. On the back we got Wendy and Michael. And we've got the Cheshire Cat. And I see Jopie on there. Alice. Alice is on the back. Yeah, it's really, really, really cute. Yeah, yeah, they're all scattered throughout. And then we have our, our dish towel. And obviously I didn't want to use this stuff today because I don't want it to get through because I love it so much. But if you want to take one end, we can hold sure. it up for them. Like that. See? And so there's the pattern. You can see all the characters. There's Peter King. To hang it on your little, if you have a knob. Yeah. But they're very generously sized. Look at this guy. It's wider than me. <laughs> That's pretty good. So, yeah, they're just lovely. And thank you so much. So, yeah, I wanted you guys to see the pattern. Thank you. So Penelope says, did, Hi, you know, Pete. did you know Honora and Fran run an Uber service? They gave us a ride home from Good Kids the World. I didn't know that. We were sitting with them. Oh, how nice. And they had taken an Uber over to Good Kids the World. Oh, how cool. And I think they were, Those staying, are a pain, aren't they? they were staying at Baby Bay Lake Tower. Oh, yeah. You can, you can clip it. There you go. And then... uh. They were, I heard them because I'm an eavesdropper. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I heard funny. Them discussing. I think they got dropped off and had to walk. From oh. where the parking lot was all the way. So I said, we're going to be going past there. Where were we staying? We were over at Yacht Club. We were at Yacht Club. Yes. Oh. So we said, no, we'll be happy to drop you off. So, yeah. That's so nice. You're so kind. My goodness. I would enjoy being an Uber driver, but people would not want me to drive them because I think I would just drive and talk the whole time. <laughs> $75, please. You know. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Hi, Tiki Man fan. Hi, Tiki Man fan. So, yeah, I, I sorry we didn't do a chat check, but hello, one and all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting our stream and my channel, and thank you for supporting Sam's Give Kids the World Race. The link, if anyone would like to donate, is pinned to the top of the chat, just in case. No obligation whatsoever, um, but it helps her out, helps Give Kids the World out. Um, if she gets to her goal, she gets the link to the race sooner. So, so she's like, I really hope I get it. So fingers crossed. <laughs> but you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for everything. I'm not saying it, but did you do say you just signed up to volunteer at Give Kids the World Project? Oh, that's awesome, Doug. Way to go. I love that. It's such a rewarding experience. I highly recommend it to everyone. Um, you know, and it's just, it's, it's hard. To, it's so hard to describe. I can't put it into words. Um, it's more magical to me than Disney, in, in my opinion. But that's, you know, that's my take on it. And it's something that you have to see to understand because mm -hmm. I've had people ask me well what is so special about that place like why is it so magical and I can tell you about the star room and all the things that they do and you know all of that which is great but unless you're there and just see the enormity of what is going on there um, it just really hits your heart hard it yeah real when you donate. yeah Neil you guys know our friends Alyssa and Neil when Neil went into that star room, and you know Neil, he's a tough New York guy, he brought tears to his eyes. So that says something right there. When you can make a grown man have tears in their eyes, you've touched on their heartstrings. And that's what Give Kids the World does. It provides hope to these critically ill children and their families. And that's why we all band together. Like, you know, Honora's here because of Give Kids the World and winning the auction with the Discom um, event that was 
canceled because the hurricane. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but the bid went on. Right. So, <laughs> at least we raised money for DizCon that way. Right. And so, yeah, so who knew the hurricanes were going to come one after the other? But, you know, we made the best of it, and we, we let the auction stay up. And luckily, kind people and generous people like Honora and all the other people that bid, um, you know, they, they put it up and, and made it successful. So thank you to you. Okay. Kibbit is done, I think. Here we go. Oh. oh, oh <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, guys, we're going to switch places, and we're going to put the Shabbat over there, and I'm really hoping they don't ooze. If they ooze, we'll call it a loss, and, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Here you go, guys. This is Kimba. Yum. Okay, so we're going to put that in. We're going to turn the oven higher. Okay. I believe it's set to 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Bake 375. Start timer. We'll do 20. Yeah, and if we need to add more time, we can. No worries there. And uh, yeah, can they see it? Oh my gosh! Oh, are we at the stove? Look at the. Uh, you gotta show the bubbling on the side. Oh. This is Kibbe. Now, I will say, you can garnish this in a number of ways. Um, my dad and my husband would eat it only with ketchup. I like using what I call leban. Yep. A lot of people call lebna, but it's just basically plain Greek yogurt. Yep. Greek yogurt. It's kind of like a sour cream, mm -hmm. but not as rich. And I love it on kibbeh. Mm -hmm. It cuts the richness, and um, it gives it a little tarty, little flavor, kind of like sour cream on a baked potato. But that's how I like it. You can garnish with parsley or your favorite mint. <laughs> <laughs> um, however you like to do it. Um, you can even use green onions if that's your preference. But it does kind of look like a meatloaf, doesn't it? And I got some store-bought pita bread. Um, I got the low-carb one for me and the regular time for everyone else to serve on the side. So we always... Have Kind of the traditional way you always serve pita bread with every meal. Um, I, my uncle Norman, he lived well into his 90s, and his every dinner he would have his Syrian bread, his pita bread with him. So, thank you, Richard. So yeah. So while we let this rest a little bit before we cut yes. into it because if you were to cut into this now number one it would like burn you it's like nuclear hot it's like napalm <laughs> or number two the other reason is if you cut it now it would probably just all fall apart so you want it to just just like a lasagna or a meatloaf mm -hmm. you let it rest so that you know it all comes together and is is good when you cut into it so i'm going to put this and move it. You got it? It's heavy. It's hot and it's heavy. <laughs> Go, Richie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so while we're doing that, I have a few things to show everyone. Um, we had some magic mail. So I'll go over that. Some I got in person. Some I got my mail. I got this beautiful card in the mail from... Um, uh, Brandy, boiler up, didn't they have boiler up in the chat? Uh, and thank you. She always writes such inspiring uh, messages. It's just says thinking of you. And am I here? Where am I? Here? Am I good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, I'll never, you know, I've been doing this for years and I still can't figure out what I'm doing. But <laughs> yeah, so that's from Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. And oh, the oven came up to temperature. That's good. Then we got a beautiful, uh, fun Easter card. 
from our good friend Glenn Marchant in the chat. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm behind because, like I said, I haven't gone live in three weeks. <laughs> uh, this is so cute. It says, just stuck it in to say hi. And this is from um, our good friend Julie C2, Easter card. Very fun. And then we got this beautiful card from Janice Disney. I love it. Reminds me of Larry, little dog with the bunny ears. <laughs> and then this cute happy Easter card with a bunch of awesome stickers. And on the back, I kept the envelope because I wanted to show you. It has Ohana, a Ohana sticker on it. This is from our good friend um, Katie Mack. And she embellished the card with some stickers too. Always love that. Very crafty. And I love the stickers. Those are always so much fun. That's another reason I saved the envelope though, so I don't lose the stickers. And then I got this really beautiful inspirational card from um, Sarah, 4382 in the chat. Very nice Easter card. And also from Sarah came a very beautiful Easter prayer booklet, which I really enjoyed a lot. Um, very inspiring, um, and I love it very much. Thank you for thinking of me. All of you, you don't have to do that. And honestly, every time I go to the mailbox and I see uh, cards and letters and all of that, it just makes my heart so happy and full. And thank you. You don't have to do it. And that you take time out of your day to think of me really means a lot. So thank you. Okay, so that's it with that mail. Now, I got a couple of in-person gifts. Now this one, I told you I saw my wonderful friend Shannon, who I adore, and her husband Garrett last week, and I couldn't believe it. I was like screaming with joy because I'm like a Disney nerd. <laughs> Look, guys, this is the hand-pulled, handmade Disneyland candy cane from Christmas time. How it got here from California in one piece, she bubble wrapped it. <laughs> Is a miracle. Shannon, I don't know how you did it, but you're amazing. I'm gonna treasure this. I can't even, I, I can't eat it because it's so awesome. I can't believe I got one. So thank you so, so much. I love it very much. That was so thoughtful. I can't imagine the care you had to use to get it here in one piece. I don't know if I could have done that. <laughs> I'm gonna put this over here so I don't break it. That would be like my worst nightmare. It is a Christmas miracle, Mark. It really is. Those things shatter. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like cold sugar, so those, one little crack and it's a goner. And then I went out to dinner with our good friends, um, Jan S. Disney and Julie C. Two uh, Friday night. Uh, they're in town, and they're actually heading on a cruise, and uh, we had dinner at home coming on Friday. Very nice with their friends Bob and Kathy, who I met for the first time. Lovely, lovely couple. And uh, Jan brought me these beautiful Easter kitchen towels with Mickey and Minnie on them. Yep. And also this adorable Mickey Sorcerer hat keychain. But the thing about this is she got it from Disneyland Paris. Yeah, and I can't believe she, she was so thoughtful to give that to me. That was just beyond generous. And, and of course, I never expect anything from you guys except your friendship and your love, and I love you guys right back. Um, oh, yeah, and then Julie made us bracelet. I think Sam took hers because it's not in here. But this is mine. And she made this, you guys, with all the sparkles and everything. Isn't it cute? I'm definitely going to be wearing that. And, uh, yeah, so thank you one and all for your generosity and your kindness and thoughtfulness. And you honestly, like I said, I never expect it. Honestly, you don't have to do any of this and that you do it. Um, like I said, it fills my heart. It shocks me, first of all. I still get shocked when you guys all show up for the chat. 
but just like yeah there you know you have like 90 people watching or however many and i'm like really <laughs> that's incredible so thank you thank you for being here all of you michelle says the candy can last forever can't wait to hear how you like it Oh my gosh, I can't imagine. I'm so excited. I know how rare they are because um, you can only get them certain days at certain times and they only make so many of them in a day because they're so tedious and, and painstaking to make. And that I've got one, I like it was like the holy grail. I never in my lifetime thought I would have one. So thank you, Shannon, You're, you rock. And guys, like I said, she makes amazing things in her Etsy shop. Go check her out. She's so sweet and so kind. And her, you know, attention to detail, everything is so well made. Her ears don't hurt your ears. Her headbands and things, they don't hurt your ears. Um, and I can't say enough about it. She, she's so talented. It's amazing. And she's great with plants, which I'm not. <laughs> I kill every plant I get. And I, I try really hard. Richard laughs at me. What? Even the plastic. I, even the plastic ones, I know. I had, see, what's been happening lately is when I put in my Walmart order, because I still get my groceries delivered because it's such a hassle around here because everything's gotten so stressful and busy. You can't even park in the parking lots anymore. Um, I just get it delivered with my Walmart Plus um, membership. Well, they didn't have, you know, the mint like this. So what do they send me? Oh, show sure them, Richard. <laughs> they sent me this little plant. And look at the mint on there, you guys. It's like this little, it's, it's like got spots on it. I don't even, I think it's got a disease. Because it doesn't even look healthy, Shannon, if you're still watching. It's got like, I mean, how can I kill a plant before I even have possession of it? <laughs> it's just, and that's how it's happened. And they did the same thing the last time for the chicken parm challenge with the basil. And Tony, if you're still here, you remember. So I took the basil that I needed and I thought, oh, I'll try to keep this plant alive. I really, really, really wanted to keep the plant alive. I really tried so hard. <sighs> I watered the plant unknowing that Richard had also watered the plant and the plant died. <laughs> so we don't have basil. I don't think that mint's going to make it. And uh, Shannon, if you live closer, I would ask you to show me your green thumb and how to do it because obviously I do not have a proficiency for gardening. My husband did. I was the harvester and preserver and he was the planter and the sower and all of that. But um, yeah, we had a 1500 square foot garden when we lived in Alaska because the soil was so fertile there. Um, and it had, it actually contained, they said volcanic ash because we took it to the university to be um, analyzed. And they said that makes things like grow like crazy. And we have bumper crops of zucchini, green beans, pumpkins, you name it. And uh, we would donate a whole bunch of it, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food to the food bank there. Because there was no way we could eat it all. Even when I put it up to preserve it, you know, you can only eat so many pickled green beans or so much zucchini relish before you're like, okay, that's enough. So we would donate the extra. And uh, he just loved doing it. He was good at it. I'm not good at it. <laughs> Tasha said, thank you for being wonderful. We love to be here. Oh, thank you, Tasha. Sticky Man fan said, we're just here for the food course. Yeah, me too. See, I can cook. I can, I can, you know, use the prepared herbs and things like that. I know how to use them. I just can't keep them alive. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, it's so good to be live with you guys again. I haven't been live since the chicken parm challenge. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I I lost heart on that one, and I think I lost heart because I was not myself. Um, the night before the challenge, and Tony knows, I was up the whole entire evening uh, sick. I couldn't keep anything down, and... I, I was this close to canceling the chicken parm challenge. I'm like, but it's for Gift Kiss the World. Tony's in town from Chicago. I couldn't let everybody down. So I pulled myself together and I did, you know, the cook off. I lost by two points or two to one or something like that. I don't know. But um, it was all good. I'm happy for Tony. But um, I was, I've been sick the last three weeks and it's not anything contagious, it's not COVID. 
I just feel queasy, nauseous, and not, you know, 100%. Um, but I'm finally starting to make the up, uphill, you know, turn that corner. So that's why I haven't been live. Joey! Joey from It's Joey's World is here. Hi, Joey! Oh my gosh! Happy, happy birthday! I'm so glad to see you. Want to say hi to everybody? Right there. Good evening, everybody. It's Joey. Uh, Yesterday was his birthday. Man. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. We have the best day ever today at Hollywood Studios where I met Mindy. You saw Mindy? In the end zone. Yay. Spectacular. Look, you're on the TV. How do I do that? That was so good. Oh. We have $25 away. Oh, you guys are amazing. Thank yeah, you so right. much. And I learned how to let it go singing that song. It's oh, yay. <laughs> It sounds like you had a wonderful That's day. Right, Donna. Oh, I'm so happy for Thank you, Joey. Thank you very much. I smell dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're waiting, can you get that green bag for me underneath the sphere? Because Joey. Sorry to interrupt the program. No, you're fine. Perfect yeah. Oh, good. That's, you're Joey, I've got something. Yeah, that's right. Because I wasn't here for your birthday yesterday, but I knew you were coming, so. There I come. And whose colors are these? Who wears colors like that? That's right. This is Joey's world. I'm a devoted fan of Joey. <laughs> It says, wishing you a perfect day. Uh, thank you, Donna. You're welcome, uh, Joe. Yeah, sure thing. I love here. you so I much. I love you very much, Donna. <laughs> I'll help thank, you out. Thank you, microphone, pretty too, y'all. Aww. I thought you'd have fun with those. Whoa, get this. We're yeah, so that um, we can learn how to let it go. <laughs> can I just say that seeing you happy makes me so happy, Joey. Oh, this is yep, Joey. I thought she could sit in your room and keep you company. I'm watching sports like I know. Yeah. She and what team will she root for in the baseball? Sport? I'll tell you what, it does matter. As long as she loves sports, that's all that matters. Well, then she's down with that. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome, Joey. I love you. I love you very much, and I love you too, our job. Oh. Yes, You're the best. Thank you. Okay, take oh, back done? to where you were. Okay. I even got a birthday card from Mindy. You did. Oh, how nice. I'm going to step in the oven behind you, Joe, so watch out. It's going to be hot. Hot stuff coming through. Sam met her goal? Woo! Yeah, these came out perfect. Mm -hmm. They're just ready. They Wonderful. Stayed, they stayed, they stayed, they stayed, they stayed. You guys, Sam hit her marathon goal. Yeah. She raised eight hundred and fifty dollars for wow. Give Kids the World. Thank you all so much. You're amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know Sam is so excited. Is she in the chat? Yeah. Okay. So I was gonna say, Sam, if you're in there, make sure you thank everybody. Sam. I saw in the hallway the new Ariel picture. Did you yeah. really? Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Do you want to do the nuts? So here's what we do. These are hot out of the oven. That's right. So now we're going to brush them with the syrup, the atar, which is um, sugar, water, orange blossom, water, and that's it. Oh, and lemon juice. Sorry, lemon juice. Well, I'm not an expert on cooking. I'm more of an expert on sports history on film. But let me tell you, it's so good to make dinner like this. Well, I think I know what you are an expert on, too, is eating. That's right. Yeah. The chicken. That's right. Not that chicken official that last month at the end show, Big City Greens Classic, that really caught me by surprise switch, and love it. Yep, switch places. I think we're going to put more, like, yeah. What's the topping? Pistachio nuts? That is pistachio. crushed pistachios. Oh, yeah. 
classic Middle Eastern flavors. Yeah, you guys came at the right time. I hope you had me on dinner. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. Okay. So that was about, it was about 15. 15 minutes. Wow. And that and I hadn't even jacked up the oven yet. Yeah. Yeah, so boy, it makes a lot. See again, it made look how much syrup is left yeah. over. You can, I can make lemonade and stuff with that yes. too. You can put it in your iced tea. Yes. These are really pretty, but I'm gonna let them cool before we touch them. We probably won't try these on camera just now because they're hot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is it good? No, it's oh. a piece of bread. I don't. Yum. And the filo dough is going to be crispy. The inside is going to be creamy. And that's what I'm going to describe the flavor as. We'll wait a couple minutes, and then we'll see if we can cut one in half maybe and let the steam escape and try it. <laughs> hey, you what, know, Donna? We, we set a record for the quickest visit at Disney Park ever. Did you really? Accident. What did you do, Joe? He went the wrong way to Epcot. He? Oh, he went the wrong part. What part did you have on your mind? I, I, I don't know why I put Epcot in the directions in the morning, but we were headed to Hollywood Studios. And you ended up at Epcot? I went to Epcot. <laughs> the gate and had to turn around. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I moved like a tie. <laughs> But according to Joe, we officially went through the entrance gate, the drive through, so that counts. it counts. Yeah. That's right. Records in my mind may never be broken. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I'm gonna put a couple on here. Almost professional. Isn't it? I know it's gorgeous. Wow. Oh, here we go, guys. Yeah. Let's take a picture. Then I'll come in half, and we'll see with the fork if uh, we can try them. I don't want to burn anybody. Look, that is, they were they supposed to be in there longer? Well, it was yeah, I they were ready in fifteen. Yeah. So I'm going to cut them in half, and we'll see what we've got. Okay. Yeah, sure, Vic said that's a rookie move, Keith. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess for a Jersey, a Jersey, I, okay. I'll take that from you, Leanne, and you hold You ready? Okay. I would blow first, okay. Mark said he reached for one and he pulled the plate away. Mm. Uh, mm. Is it good? Mm. Is it super hot? Mm. I have an open spoon. It's warm, but it. blow on it. It is warm. It's not scorching warm. Mm -hmm. It's warm. Be prepared. Hey, Neil. Hi, Alyssa. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Hot, but good. Oh, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Well, let them cool down a little bit, guys. But um, there's one more thing in the, in the fridge. Mm -hmm. So, Joey, you want to help me close out my yes. show? Let's go to it. It will be okay. an honor. Okay, so we'll put Honora and Joe. No okay. About it. So, I want to thank everyone for all of your support. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your cards and Keith's making funny faces at us. <laughs> Thank you for helping Sam reach her goal. You guys are just amazing, and I'm so blessed to have all of you in my life. Thank you from Nora for cooking oh, with me. It was you. so much fun. So much fun. People. Thank you, Joey, for joining me. Right. And um, I'm not sure when I'll be live. Again, but I do have a Bluey stream schedule, May 28th. And there's one more surprise, I think, for Joey. 
for joining Thanks, us everyone. so appreciate you um i do have my bluey stream with jeff it's tentatively for the 28th oh, i've got to firm up the date good. with them it's going to be a lot of fun oh, um i'm going to put out vlogs and stuff until then i think and we'll see what my schedule does and what it allows but um yeah so i will see you guys in a little while i love you all bye, bye. bye.